Hi, my name is Razim Fazal. Uh, we are here at Hariport University. I'm going to take you through a campus tour right now at the moment, show you the offerings of our Dubai campus. Please join me now. So we're going to start off uh, with our laboratories. Uh, we'll start with the robotics laboratory. Okay, so we are in the robotics laboratory at the moment. Uh, so we have uh, modern equipments with regards to the learning process. Uh, it's a, again a mirror image of our campus based in Edinburgh. Similar equipments used, we kind of offer hands-on experience for our students. They're not only going to learn academically, but apply that learning practically as well. Uh, so these are equipments that we have bought uh, directly down from our Edinburgh campus. If you know Herit Watt is renowned for the Robotorium, National Robotorium based in Scotland. These are equipments that's used in the National Robotorium back in uh, Scotland, uh, in our Edinburgh campus. We have mir mirrored it here. Uh, we're also going to be developing our National Robotorium here in Dubai, along with the Dubai government as well. And this is the best view you get here on campus. So this is the energy laboratory. Unfortunately, students are around, so I don't think we would be able to record here. Again, uh, these are mirror equipments that we have back in our Edinburgh campus as well. Of course, it's a more extended facility over there. And students have to follow the safety protocols in terms of entering these laboratories. So the coat, the shoes uh, that are based on standards, they have to uh, wear them before they enter the laboratories. Uh, we also have the electronics laboratory here. So this is our electronics laboratory. Uh, our students also do take part in F1 races. Uh, they build their own car, they compete with other university students. This is a regular practice back in the UK as well. Uh, students get into Innovation Hub and through Innovation Hub, they develop their own racing car, compete with other universities. So similarly, we have that sort of a practice here at Harriet Watt. In fact, the last academic cycle, we had students taking part in F1 racing, where they had their car running in uh, uh, F1 uh, tracks in uh, Abu Dhabi. And our student representation won uh, the prize, uh, prize money as well. We were first in terms of uh, competing across universities across the region. So uh, that's something that students in addition, addition to their studies do. Uh, we also have an innovation hub where they do this research and development. Okay, so let's move forward. So this is the grid area. So just to give you an idea, uh, if you see our classes are all numbered, uh, so it's easier for students to identify which classroom they have their next lecture. Uh, we also have classes, uh, uh, the lecture theatres, uh, and we also have uh, digital classrooms where the tutorials generally take place. The lecture theatres is normally for major lectures. Uh, this is the grid area where do a lot of research and development take place. So let's move forward. So mostly this flow has science and engineering based programs. Uh, we have a psychology laboratory here as well. Uh, we are going towards there and a few classrooms for School of Engineering and uh, School of Sciences. So some computer science students also do take some of the modules here. These are some of the classrooms out here. We have an innovation hub uh, where students do a lot of research and development. Uh, let's go into one of the classrooms as well. So the typical class strength for a science and engineering uh, program is about 40 to 50 students uh, at undergraduate level. At postgraduate level, it's between 25 to 30 students. Uh, but our social sciences classes are a lot more bigger. We'll have closer to 100, 150 students there, especially business programs, because we have uh, partnered up with one of the oldest business schools, the Edinburgh Business School, uh, again, a signature school for us. And then our textile school, again, the second oldest tech school in the world. Uh, we will be heading there uh, on a uh, textiles and design floor SOTD. Okay, so this is a classroom setup. Uh, this is where major lectures take place and then revisions, tutorials take place in digital classrooms that you saw there. All these theatres are numbered, so when the students do enroll on their enrollment, the subject area and where the lecture is or, uh, delivered is clearly mentioned. And we also have two security officers in each floor. Uh, so whenever they are here, they are finding it difficult to find the classrooms, they would be guiding them accordingly as well. So this is the psychology laboratory. Here we have interview rooms as well. Again, this is to give hands-on experience for the course. Students do go through real-world uh, scenarios where they could apply their learning and uh, 
like like I said, these are exclusively for students. We are not a clinically driven university when it comes to offerings in psychology. Mostly we offer business related psychology at postgraduate level, but we do offer BSc psychology, which directs you to clinical courses. So if there is students who are interested in doing clinical psychology at PG level, they can do the BSc psychology program and then lead to clinical psychology courses at PG level in other universities. Maybe we may introduce these courses because of the demand that we're currently facing in the School of Psychology, we get a lot of numbers there, especially for a business psychology program uh, at master's level. Okay, so we are on the fifth floor. Uh, okay. so there is some event going on that side. I don't think we'll be able to go there. So towards that side, we have big the lecture theatres. Here we have our computer laboratories. And then let me just take you here. So this area is called the marketplace. Uh, here we have uh, conversion events, we have student events that take place here. Uh, we do our PG open days here as well. Uh, so this marketplace is used for also career fairs. So whenever we have our career fairs, we do them at the marketplace as well. Uh, we have uh, a trading suit here. Uh, we are one of the few universities that have Bloomberg registered data to be accessed. So students get a hands-on experience, especially finance, accountancy and finance students get direct access to uh, Bloomberg registered uh, data. Uh, let me try to take you to the trading suit from here. So here we have more boardrooms, partner suits. And this is our trading zone. And then if you see the experience is being in a trading zone where they get uh, keyboard access in that way, multiple screens. So students definitely get an hands-on experience in their learning, which they can apply in a real-world scenario as well. This sort of an experience definitely adds value into your CV as well. And the employers are very well aware that uh, students do get these sort of practical exposure at the at their degree level as well. That's one of the reasons why we have the big fours on board as well. So this is the computer laboratory. We have students in both the other sides. So generally we do all computer-based exams here. This gives access to about 150 to 200 uh, PCs. Uh, some of the computer-based modules also take place here. They are, they are three different classes, but during exams, the partitions will be taken off and used as a one, one facility as well. Our exams are streamlined across all three campuses. So they take place at the <coughs> same time in uh, Edinburgh, in uh, the Dubai campus and in Malaysia campus. That's one of the reasons why students can transfer among the campuses. So it's quite uh, convenient here. Students can keep their bags on this basement level and then they would be able to access the computers directly. During exams, obviously, they will be asked to leave the uh, bags uh, away. We'll have inspection uh, throughout the examination as well. Not many modules have computer-based exams, but it was computer science uh, towards uh, max engineering, some modules do have computer-based examinations that take place in this particular premises. All written exams take place in that area where we couldn't enter. Uh, that classroom accommodates closer to 350 to 400 students. Uh, so this is generally the business school, the volume is quite high. And uh, the specialization options are about four to five. Students then start with the initial specialization and then uh, specialize among the specializations based on their preferences. So let's move to the fourth floor, School of Design and Textiles. You would see that all classes when you enter, a lot of access required. So safety wise, it's a very safe university. If we and if you have to enter the university at the entrance, you have to share your Emirates ID or passport, any sort of identification to enter the university, you get access card. So anyone loitering around without a known candidate, we have a security room 24 hours monitored. Uh, they would immediately inform a security and they would start uh, asking you and evacuating you if you're not with uh, someone responsible with the university. So now we are going to a school of design and textiles, second oldest school in the entire world. So uh, regards to architecture, if you know, we have Bachelor of Architecture, BA Architecture only in Dubai campus. We don't offer it in Edinburgh, we don't offer it in Malaysia. Architectural engineering is offered in all three campuses, so this is something to note. So there is no Go Global Transfer for Bachelor of Architecture program. It's a very popular program. This year we hit uh, the number of slots we need to hit uh, by end of July. So the course fills in. 
so here instead of uh, classrooms you see a lot of studio style uh, classrooms these are some of the work of our students Again, we have digital classrooms here for tutorial sessions. We have lecture theatres. Some of the students are here working on their project as well. So every student will have a personal tutor assigned to them at the beginning of their course itself. So any course related concerns, they can directly reach out to the personal tutor and discuss. So some students might have challenges in terms of a module not being understood well. They need more access towards uh, learning materials. Uh, the personal tutor will make sure that is arranged. They meet uh, the students on the third floor, uh, which is a, a staff zone. Uh, I'll start with the photographic laboratory. And we have fashion branding and promotion program available here. Again, a very popular option, not many students we have one board, uh, it, it's a niche course, so this is a photographic studio we have here on campus uh, for that particular program. Again, hands-on in terms of the facility and equipment. Uh, students do take part in a lot of uh, uh, fashion week uh, magazines and programs throughout their learnings. This also gives them an exposure in terms of to, uh, their presence to the industry as well. And uh, their classes do take place towards the other side. So we have virtual reality support here. This is the work studio for fashion branding and promotion, communication design. Some of our students preparing for their assessment uh, because they'll have their exams assessment for the first semester by the end of November, by the mid of November. So they'll start preparing for those assessments uh, right away. Uh, all our learnings are quite digitalized, so most of the learnings are offered through a software called Canvas. That's where all the learning materials, lecture videos, lecture theater notes, all those are upload, uploaded in the Canvas software. Students get access to that only after they have enrolled and paid their first semester fees. Once that is cleared, uh, they would get access to that uh, software and they would be able to proceed further. And from there onwards, uh, on their every installment, they need to clear their payment so that they would be able to have further access on that. Your examination, uh, mock exam, materials, sample papers, all of those will be available there. In case you have to submit an assignment, you will submit in the Canvas software. Students will be very well versed on this. Orientations will be given to that as well. And if they need further assistance, we have an IT support team based on the second floor, which we will be going next. Again, extension of this is more of studios where the students work. We move forward for the second floor next. So third floor uh, is a staff zone, like I mentioned. So we have all our teams based there and the faculty is based there as well. So we'll skip the third floor and then we'll go to second floor where we have uh, more classrooms, laboratory, and we also have uh, study pods. Let's go to the library in here. So this is our library facility. We have closer to 150,000 uh, digital books available that you can access here digitally and more than 20,000 books available physically. Uh, it's a hands-free check-in and check-out system. If you have to grab a physical book, you can check out from this kiosk. And if you want to hand it over back, the kiosk outside, you would be able to hand it over. Uh, all the books are segregated according to the school and subject area, so it's easier to access them. Uh, and we have plenty of copies uh, for each book. Uh, we also have uh, group study rooms here. So these are students can access directly and book the group studies as they wish. Uh, we have some of these rooms available towards the other side of this floor and even on the first floor. It's a moving robot where you can get access to whatever you require. Uh, we have a silent study room uh, there as well. So the library, this library is a quiet study area. Uh, so students who want to individually study in a very quiet environment uh, choose to come to this particular facility and study. So here we have our IT help desk team. Uh, so any students initially joining us or have any technical challenges, they can obviously visit uh, the IT help desk team. They'll be able to support them with the challenge, the concern, and uh, provide the proper guidance. Initial phase of, uh, you know, 
creating the accounts, generating passwords become a lot challenging. So then we direct them here to the IT support team. Some of our courses offered uh, at uh, foundation level is going to is offered here. Again, this side we have uh, a, an extension of uh, study labs uh, or study pods available over there. So we'll move to the first floor where we have student services and the cafe. So this is the cafe area, it's uh, run by Kitty's Cafe, they are the ones who run the cafe. We have a live station over there, uh, we have different themed food offered on a daily basis. We have cold food available here and uh, quick snacks that are available out here as well. Uh, these are uh, given at an affordable rate for students, so they get a discounted rate. Uh, and there is an additional uh, food court available for this zone, just a few blocks away you can go and grab any sort of options available there or you can order food uh, online and get it delivered to the campus as well. Uh, there are two collaborative theatres on campus, one on the fifth floor and one on the first floor. So this is commonly used for more interactive learning, interactive modules that are taught in these collaborative theatres. Okay, so let's go to the final area of the campus tour. So this is our well-being team. We have a, a well-being team uh, based here on campus as well. Uh, we have about three trained psychologists here on campus. So any students have any sort of concerns uh, with regards to mental health or any concerns, challenges, they have homesickness. They have a team where they can speak to directly. They just need to send them an email and based on the availability, they will be given an appointment. It's going to be completely clo on a closed environment. It's going to be between the student and uh, the consultant. If the parents have to be involved, the student has to give authority for that and then they would be able to be involved in the same matter. Okay, let's move forward. So this is the student council area. Uh, here we have a few games to re for students to relax. Uh, there's a PS5 here, a few of uh, ping pongs. Uh, we have an activity studio here. If students are interested in dancing, music, or any other activities, they can be part of the studio. We have an elected student council, president, and board of members. Students can be part of that as well. Uh, uh, the president runs for two academic years, so if the students are interested, they can be part of that. About 30 to 40 clubs and societies are active here on campus, including traditional clubs, sports clubs, and activity clubs the students can be part of, okay? So this is the Student Services Center. This is a one-stop shop for the students where they can get uh, any queries in regards to their course registration, enrollment. Uh, they also get uh, assistance with regards to their visa. Uh, if they want to make fees, uh, pay their fees, they can come here, take a token number depending on their concern, and based on that, the team will assist accordingly. That brings to the end of uh, the campus tour. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them.